Good morning all. I recently discovered that this NH Duino Uno had stopped working. Uh, lights came on, but it just wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't program. So this is a clone Arduino Uno. Um, it's about as far from Genuino as you can get, but it's cheap. It's about three pounds, I think. I'll put a link to uh, one of these. I think Alice stocks these. Uh, I'll put that in the description. Uh, what I like about it is that it's got a CH340, so um, no problems communicating USB to serial, not like the FTDI fakes that uh, are on the nanos. It's also got these male header pins, so uh, whether or not you've got male or female connecting wires, you can either connect them into the females or the males, that's really handy. And it's got lots of uh, power out connections here. But uh, rather than chuck it in the bin and uh, just get a new one, I thought I'd have a go at fixing this. Now most of the components on here are surface mount, which would be quite tricky. But there are two items which are through hole. And if you flip it over, you can see that they're here and here. And there, the crystals. And I got lucky. Now the way I tracked down that it was actually the crystal that was the problem is because I was having no luck communicating with this thing via USB, I thought I'd use one of these. It's a USB tiny ISP, and uh, it has the six pin ISP header. Uh, the cable actually doesn't come with this one. I'll see if I can find a link to this as well, and maybe even one with a cable. Um, you connect the uh, six pin header plug to that six pin header there, and then you're programming the chip directly from these six wires, which go to six pins on the chip. There's really nothing else involved. All of this stuff is not involved in this uh, technique for programming. The only other thing that was uh, being used in this configuration was that crystal, and that's why I decided to remove it. And this is what I found. Under the uh, crystal, there are the through hole pads, but there are also these surface mount pads which I think are probably there so that um, a surface mount ceramic resonator could be put on here instead of the crystal. But those pads are quite closely spaced in the middle and the underside of the crystal is all metal. So you can probably see here that uh, if the crystal is pushed down against the board, the underside of the metal can could conceivably bridge across the two surface mount pads, thus shorting the crystal out. And actually that's what was happening. Now you can imagine that um, the designer of this layout was thinking, okay, well the crystal needs a little insulating washer and um, that's what should have been fitted, but it hasn't. So maybe they were making up a batch of these, the insulating washers ran out and they just decided, oh, let's just shove the crystals in without the washers. What could possibly go wrong? So I'm just going to solder suck these holes, if I can get onto it. It's always a bit tricky, this. No, that didn't get it. I think that might have got it. Oh, and I've lost the pad. Disaster has struck. Now this isn't completely surprising because I've already uh, actually replaced this crystal and uh, proved to myself that it does work. It was the crystal that was the problem. Um, I still have top pads intact, so the crystal will have an anchorage and I can bend the wires over once they come through and solder them onto these scraped tracks. This pad's starting to come off as well now, but I still think it can be fixed. Now, a while ago, I bought uh, this 10 pack of 16 meg crystals. I think it was just either a pound or a dollar. So they're quite cheap. It's a worthwhile repair. So let's take one of these out and solder it onto the board. Now to make sure we don't have the problem again, I've put a tiny bit of blue tack under the crystal to space it off the board so that the uh, metal can doesn't short on those pads again. So this one, I think I can still solder into the through hole. That one I'm going to have to bend over and solder onto the track. Well, now I've got a problem. Because the through hole has uh, effectively disappeared, the load capacitors, these two little um, 20 picofarad capacitors on the top side, are no longer connected to the crystal. The crystal, I think, is successfully connected to the microcontroller. Those two tracks 
uh, running to those two vias there, but now I've got no load capacitor. So <laughs> do I abandon this video, throw this board in the bin in disgust? No, I think this video has some valuable um, lessons in it. So I'm going to stick a load capacitor on the bottom. I've managed to find a, a 20 puff capacitor. So let's scrape a bit of this, what I think is ground plane, and stick it on there because I'm determined to fix this now. So this capacitor is going underside. I don't know, is that kind of short onto the ground plane? Well, this is my last chance, so let's just stick this on and hope for the best and it's not working so uh, the only thing I can think is that this leg of the capacitor is actually on the ground plane so I'm going to shift that leg over to the other side this is really last chance saloon and uh, no it still doesn't work and you can see that there's a problem if I touch D13 with my finger I can make that LED fade out. Now I'm assuming that's because the microcontroller's pin is an input, it's not been set to an output so it's got no, uh, it's all high impedance that's why I'm able to dim that. So what could possibly be wrong? Maybe the, um, the other through hole has broken. Perhaps I'll just add another 20 puff cap. Let's try it. This video is quite likely not to see the light of day because it's all gone a bit wrong but I'm determined to know what actually is the cause what is the cause of this problem so I'm ploughing on regardless if I upload this video it'll be a miracle <laughs> As you can imagine, it didn't work, and I'm quite cross now. Well, for some strange reason, I can't let this go. So um, I've noticed that the top side pads are still intact, and they're still tracked up to the two capacitors. So I've actually put the crystal on the underside. Yes, it's a little bit impractical, and... Uh, I've also looked at the data sheet to try and find out where the crystals solder on to the chip pins. Let's have a quick look at that. And uh, it's here, there's pin one, and the oscillator uh, crystal here, crystal one, crystal two, go on to pin seven and eight. So it's the last two um, away from pin one on the, uh, on the index corner. Well, that's these two um, up at this end here. So they're right adjacent to where my two crystal wires are. So I'm just going to bend those over and attach them onto those two pins and give this one final go. And, uh, well, that's the result, isn't it? Look, uh, the D13 LED is flashing on and off. That's running the Blink program. So obviously the crystal oscillator is now running. Uh, you can see the two wires uh, coming up from the crystal which is now on the bottom of the board, onto the two crystal pins, which just happen to be conveniently close by. Um, so I probably will, well, I will upload this video now, and I probably will keep this board, um, because although the crystal's a little bit impractical sitting on the bottom, um, I was using this board on standoffs on one of my wooden project boards, so that's not really going to matter too much. And what's the point of throwing it away when it works? So, um, yes, this video was really just to highlight uh, this problem of the crystal being sat down on these surface mount pads, and that's what caused this thing to fail. It's turned into a bit of a marathon soldering and getting cross uh, episode, but, um, well, there it is, fixed. Cheerio.